gender equality mission. Um, but I wasn't always, um, I wasn't always at all. I'm, I, I, I was what I call one of those women for a long time who, um, of course I was aware of the gender equality um, issue, um, but I hadn't personally really been hit by it. I had, uh, the barriers hadn't, um, hadn't got me. And so I realized now that I was just very, very lucky for a very, very long time um, to swerve them. Um, and it was actually really for me only once I got to the senior vice president um, level um, when I started to see it and understand it. And, and really that was the first time um, I'd been in a male dominant culture and environment. The first time in, in my career, actually the first time in my life really um and wow it was it was it was really like hitting a, a, a completely different temperature you know it was like taking a plane from switzerland in winter and landing in dubai in august it was a very different um, atmosphere so i really started to see it and i saw the impact that it that had on 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 women um when they really were in in the minority um, in a room rather than an, an equal voice and actually i became absolutely fascinated by it that was my reaction was to think well this is really interesting what the hell is going on here i never um experienced this before and so i really became a student of it read lots of books that led led uh, read lots of articles and that's what led me to to really see the extent of it, actually, um, I just hadn't realized. And, and, and I saw that, you know, this absolutely was not about me. This absolutely was not about the women around me. It absolutely was not about PNG. This was something that women were experiencing everywhere, every company, every culture, every country. Um, and, you know, just really getting hit in the face and still am actually every day by the data, you know, wherever you look look at the leadership level, it was mentioned in these panels, look at the leadership levels, you'll see 90% plus men. Um, only 9% of heads of state are women, they're very visible, and you probably know all their names, but they're only 9%, 7% of CEOs, only 24% of parliamentary seats, which is obviously a massive issue because that's where things are discussed, decisions are made, really bad decisions are sometimes made because of that. Um, and yeah, only 25% of what we see, read, hear about in the news is women. So I, I was just, I became fascinated. I, I realized the extent um, of it. And I thought, this is absolutely incredible, actually. This is just unbelievable. I mean, last time I looked, women are 50% of the population. All the data says women have equal intelligence, equal competence, at least equal leadership ability. So why does this happen? Where do all the brilliant, talented women go? And, you know, especially knowing that, again, there's stacks of data saying that businesses are stronger when they're run by, you know, an equal and diverse group. Society is a better and stronger. Life is better. Um, so I decided at that point, um, you know, I really felt I had an understanding of something that I hadn't understood before. It was kind of an epiphany, really. Um, so I decided I'm going to write a book about this and I'm going to share what I've learned and what I understand. Um, and I'm going to try and play a part. I'm going to try to contribute to making inequality history in whatever small way that I can. So that's you know that's how I got here and um I know you know you had a very different journey Helen I know um very different experiences but I know that what we have in common is they led you to just something that you you really felt you saw and understood and wanted to share I often speak about gender diversity to big groups of women and women will put their hand up and say how can I get your job um, and this is always where we start. So there was a few tips I, I wanted to share about this area of performance. The, the first thing really is when you take on a new role, ask yourself the question, is there growth to be had? And do I think I can really add value in this role? So look at it critically and strategically in terms of what you think it might add to your CV. And I can assure you that um, men are, um, a bit more choosy and a bit more strategic about the way that they potentially choose roles. 
when you get into that role, really understand what do they want me to deliver and then deliver it. So what are the KPIs associated with success and what does success look like? Now, it's amazing the amount of women who I interview when I ask them for context action result and they'll say things like, well, I did this assignment, but I don't really know what happened with the results because I moved on and went to work for another company. So one of the things I'd encourage you to do as you move through your career is note your results that you've achieved in different roles, like sets of case studies, and write them down and build a, a track record of it. Because believe me, when you've been working for 25 years plus, you can't always remember everything that you did early on. Think about what is your legacy in that role gonna be? What, what does success look like when you leave that role at the end of three years? Today's world, you know, what we've realized is that, and, and what I've realized is how important it is to have these discussions also with young women at the beginning of their career and in the middle of their career. And a lot of these advice, pieces of advice is relevant, you know, if you stay within the company and want to move, move boldly, or, you know, if you're leaving. Um, that element of network building is crucial and also of network building with the, with the external world. You know, I've had a big career change in the middle of my career, going com completely to a, to, to a new area where I had nil network, zero, you know, starting completely from scratch and building that all up. And, you know, working in communications and external networks, obviously, um, that is bread and butter. And I had to learn that from the beginning. So, um, and, and by doing this, appreciating a lot of the things, you know, you're all talking about now, um, as, as a piece of advice, um, the element that I think um, was talked already before by Crystal Puente is the element of pie. And I think pie is really important for yourself, as well as, you know, in conversations with your manager. Um, it's not something you just have to do on your own, but talk about it. You know, how how is your performance valued? I think this is, a you know, we are all, we are all PNG or XPNG. I think that's clear. But, you know, reflect on your image. Also, you know, looking at how other people look at you, you know, the, the old saying about, you know, how you view yourself and how others view you. I think this is a different way of looking at the feedback is, is understanding really, really what is your personal equity? You know, a lot of us come from brand building. We draw up equities for brands. We all have personal equities. We have a brand character. Our brand character is also in some way um, shaped by the experiences we get. And then there is the element of exposure. It's what you look out for, but also, you know, when I'm coaching people, it's exposure I build into their plans. It's that area of growth, of the, of the zone of um, discomfort, where you are stepping into new things and looking for that. I think, you know, that concept of pie is a really good one to take with you for yourself, but also people you bring along. Um, and bringing along people, I think, is a topic I'd also love to explore further with you today, Helen and Gabi, is that paying it forward, what can we do as senior women um, in making sure that the journey continues? So my first is very similar to yours about you've got to get used to putting your work and your words out into the world. Um, and what I mean by that is, you know, whether it's a blog post, a LinkedIn post, something you put out on your intranet, something that you share around or you talk about on Clubhouse. Everyone's on Clubhouse at the moment. Like whatever, whatever it is, you've got to get used to just getting your imperfect work out into the world because it's never really perfect because it's never really done. And so just, just get used to doing it. My, you know, I, I, I still put things out and the heart, they've got typos in and all kinds of things, but it's just my thoughts. And I try and put it out as regularly as I can, because you kind of get a bit of a response as well. That's what I think when you put your work and your words out into the world, you, you see what sticks. So for example, the concept of squiggly, which is currently probably one of the noisiest parts of my business. If you like, that's the thing that people <laughs> most share and talk about. 
squiggly was not such a headline for us eight years ago we had other things we talked about happy work and various other things but squiggly was the thing that stuck um our podcast used to be called the amazing if podcast because our business is you know wouldn't it be amazing if more people love their jobs but squiggly stuck so we went with squiggly and you only learn that by putting your work and your words out into the world and then you using that insight to then think about well how can i create more stuff that sticks so that would be kind of my, my first one yeah my second thing is um accelerate through advocates so if you want to be a thought leader um the the community that you build around your message is so important because you you kind of can't shout that loud on your own <laughs> so if you can build people that connect with your concept whatever this thing is that you are passionate about changing it makes your voice so much louder it's like having speakers in every city mm -hmm.